Welcome to the shop everyone. Today's video is supposed to be about the Honda generator that I picked up for a hundred bucks. Uh, I put out a teaser video last week about it, uh, but that is going to change today because today we're going to be working on the Big Bear. Uh, I actually got a comment yesterday regarding the mini series that I've done for this bike. I've got a couple of videos out there, I think it's about four. They'll be linked in the description down below if you want to see them. Uh, but Evan, one of my subscribers, commented that he would like to see how to replace a front diff oil on the front of this uh, ATV, the Big Bear, of course. Because I actually didn't do that in any of my videos. I'm happy to mention it, Evan. So this video is for you. And cue my all funny stuff, my little intro. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to remove the plow that I built earlier this winter. And by the way, guys, this plow actually saved me a bunch of shoveling. Worked out perfect. I was very happy about it. And two more bolts on this side. Finally, I should just have to remove the winch cable at the front here. I'm going to give this a little tug and everything should fall straight out. Just like that. And then we'll move this away. We'll put this on the hoist. And with the bike up in the air, it makes it a lot easier for uh, a visual reference on things. So on this side, which would be the right side of the bike if you were sitting on it, that right there would be the fill plug. There's actually a little plastic cap to keep dirt out of the uh, Allen wrench. I believe it's a, I think it's a four millimeter. We'll have to double check that in a second. But underneath here, right through that hole right there is your drain plug. Now I highly recommend that you make sure your fill port will actually release and will unscrew before you start to drop any oil because that way there you'll be certain that you can put oil back into it without having to mess around too too much so let's do that exactly right now I'm gonna go get my uh, drain pan ready but first things first we're gonna make sure that that oil fill plug comes off so using a small screwdriver, I'm just going to carefully pry off the plastic cap. And I'm going to try not to lose it either because, here you go, just like that. Because this cap stops a lot of dirt from piling up inside that hex hole. and makes it much easier for the next time you want to do anything with the front diff, like change your oil for example. And we we're talking about the size of this. It actually is a six mil. So we're gonna crack this loose. And it's nice and tight. Oh boy. Okay. So that's quite tight. Hmm. And this is exactly the reason why you wanna make sure you crack this open first because if I have, if I run into, oh my god, if I run into an issue now, um, without being able to put some oil back in, that could be bad. So, man, I might have to take out some heat, heat up the case a little bit. Okay, before you apply any heat, uh, I'm going to be using an open flame, so keeping that in mind, I'm going to wipe the diff clean around the area because it seems to be a little bit oily and even more so importantly I'm going to get rid of all of that stuff down below because those are super dry it's like kindling sitting there right on top of the skid plate so we're going to clean that out with a blowgun and then we'll put some uh, some nice torch to that. Mm. 
this is all the debris we found inside that skid plate, so we'll get rid of that right now. And now let's try a little bit of heat. So what I'm trying to do is heat the case around the drain plug. The case is made of aluminum, so it expands quicker than steel, and the plug is made of steel. So that is my plan right now. And of course, I've got a couple of fire extinguishers ready in case anything happens. Okay, we're going to grab our wrench without touching anything else. Hopefully, with any luck, this will have freed it up. Make sure you get the wrench in all the way. Come on now. Still nothing. Wow. Bet you that's been in there for a long time. And one more time. Hopefully this will make it happen. Come on. Oh man. Look at that wrench flex. It just doesn't want to break. Okay. Okay. We're going to have to go back to the drawing board here. Think about this. Okay, so I found my proper socket style Allen wrench key majiggy that I'm going to reduce down to a half inch drive. And with my small impact, I'm hoping that I can just kind of rattle it loose here. Let's hope, see what happens without breaking anything. That, my friends, is super tight. It really does not want to budge. Hmm. A little bit unnerving. Well, I hate that it had to come to this, but I don't see any other option right now. Uh, once it's removed, we might have to modify this fill plug, but in the meantime, I've got a cold chisel here, and I'm hoping that if I just kind of catch the edge a little bit here, and I, I can kind of tap it, to break it loose and once it's broken loose I'll be able to remove it with the proper size wrench of course but we gotta get it moving first give this a shot Aha, uh -huh, there you go. There you go, now. Now it's moving. And that right there, my friends, is the number one reason why you take the fill plug out first. This is actually not too bad of access. Now imagine this is tucked in somewhere where you just couldn't get to it. You had an extension, or after a bar, and after a long socket to get to it this is not bad so i'm just going to kind of maybe grind off that little nick on there and it'll be all right well okay that was the journey we haven't even made it to the end yet okay now with any luck the drain plug should come out much easier i'm going to go right ahead with the uh, impact see if i can rattle it loose but i want to make sure I don't strip anything out, so let's make sure we're in there good. There you go. That wasn't too bad at all. And I'm going to bring this up too. I don't make too much of a mess, because I always do. There you go. So that's not bad. 
we don't have any milkiness, it's not full of water. That's what that means. If your differential oil comes out and it's kind of milky or it's grayish, that means you got water, which means that one of your seals is not sealing properly or it's cut. So that could be one of these axle seals or it could be back here. Let's go on this side. The input seal, let's see, turn some lights on, right in here somewhere. Or it could even be one of your drain plugs, or fuel pl plugs for that matter. Something else that this differential has, which is kind of nice, because it saves those seals, believe it or not, is right there, that hose that comes up. That's your vent. And because as you're rotating those gears along, those gears cause a little bit of pressure. They build that pressure builds inside the differential, and it's got to go somewhere. So we vent at the atmosphere. Now some differentials actually have a bellows, which is pretty cool. But uh, as long as your vent is high enough that it's not going to be in the water when you're riding, and I mean this one here goes right up to the handlebars, it's good to go. So we're going to wait a few minutes. We're gonna let this drain down and then we're gonna refill it. Okay, so that's just about done dripping. We're gonna put the drain plug back in its place. We're gonna put it snug. No need to over tighten this. As you can tell, they stay tight on their own. So when it comes to refilling a diff, I got a bit of a trick that I've been doing for many years now. This is just a pump that you would actually use for marine uh, applications. This is what you would use to fill the foot oil because on those outboard motors, you would fill from the bottom up to make sure you have no air in any of the cavities, no dry bearings, no air in the bearings themselves. Um, so I started using this and just a regular, this is, I buy it in bulk, so I just mark all my containers. Uh, oh, and by the way, guys, 8090 is what you need to use in the front diff of this ATV, uh, GL4 or better. Uh, so then I would just put this container or this pump into the container, pump it into the front diff, makes it a lot easier, less mess, and then I'm, I'm kind of all for that. So give it a try. These are only a few bucks. Okay, so I'm just going to stuff the hose right in there far enough that it's not going to want to come out on its own and just simply pump and you're going to see the oil make its way through the hose and we're going to keep doing this until oil starts to spill out the top uh, on some uh, some differentials like I was mentioning they would actually have a telltale or just a drain plug on the side that you would remove and then you would fill it, of course, from here. But when the oil starts to come out the side, that's when you would stop. But there is none on these. Uh, mostly because, well, like I mentioned earlier, as long as your vent is clear, you're not building pressure in this. So you can run more oil than most differentials because of that. We're just going to keep filling this up. And we're going to clean up our drain plug. Put it back on. Now we're getting close. There you go. Perfect. Now let's seal it up. Put the drain plug back on, or fill plug back on. I always mix those up. Okay, so I've taken the fill plug to the grinder, just taken off some of the sharp edges. It's all good. And I've also added a little bit of thread sealant, or thread anti-seize. Andy's compound basically. So I'm hoping the next time I gotta take this oil apart or out, it's going to be a lot easier than it was this time. I'm just gonna put the wrench on there, give it a nice little snug. Again, it doesn't have to be super tight. Oh, had the wrench the right way the first time. And you can't forget your little plastic 
cover. Seals everything up from dirt anyways going into your uh, into that little hole there. And that's it. And that's going to be it for today's video guys. I hope it cleared it up a little bit for you Evan. I really appreciate you coming commenting about the video and letting me know that there was something I missed. I'm always obliged. I like to make videos for people like that. And I'm going to actually add a link in the description about this little tool uh, or something similar because I like this. I use these a lot. Uh, I got a few of them. So check that out uh, down below. And again, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you liked the video. And I will see all of you in the next one. Take care.